he's 50 years old. But it's a good one. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If you love the Lord, say amen. We want to greet our Facebook family today and welcome you to the Victory Temple Church here in Lenore City, Tennessee. Pastor Woody Martin and my precious wife, Peggy Martin, she's with us today. Uh, we, this kind of made me jealous because we're getting requests for her to sing instead of me. <laughs> it, that wasn't the right time to say amen, brother. <laughs> well, laughter is good. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. If you want to get if you want to get healed, get happy. Get happy. If you want to get healed, get happy. Because a, a, a merry spirit and a good spirit, a laughing spirit, a jovial spirit, maketh the bones fat. That's what Proverbs tells us. Amen. Glory to God. And we're so thankful for the blessings of the Lord. That maketh rich. But we greet everyone today. Uh, I was here yesterday praying, and uh, God was moving and blessing. If any needs, come on in, folks. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. We're glad to have you today. I was praying yesterday, and I got some requests. Uh, Chris Webb, would you mind going over and locking that door? I don't have a man, a, a man usher take care of things like that would you do that thank you i appreciate that so in the future after certain church starts we're going to lock this side door you have to come through the entrance in the front door Not a lot of reasons for that but thank you that are here but i was here yesterday i got 30 something calls myself and as i got the calls i wrote the names down and i prayed i had a good season of prayer yesterday hallelujah Nobody here but me and Jesus. And one of the requests was a mother want me to pray for her son. He's 30 years old, I believe it was. And they want to amputate his leg above his knee because of sugar diabetes. Listen to me. I've got a son 30-something years old. Maybe older than that now. I don't know how old he is. How many? 42. Well, th this this coming uh, Tuesday, what's the day, the 12th? Tuesday, he'll be uh, years old. <laughs> what, whatever. My, they, I can't keep up. My, I can just barely keep up for my own birthday, let alone everybody else's. <laughs> Amen. But that really touched me. And I prayed with every ounce of faith I had that God would postpone that surgery. He, that man would lose his leg. And I cursed that sugar diabetes in the name of Jesus. You know, Jesus, when he cursed that fig tree, nothing happened. No immediate results. But 24 hours later, they came by the next day, and Peter said, Lord, the fig tree that you cursed, the leaves were withered up. The leaves withered and died. Jesus cursed that fig tree, and I cursed sugar diabetes yesterday. And I know he hears me when I pray. And this ministry takes your prayer request seriously. We pray over every request, and many times, they've got the list of the names of the children or request. I call those names out to the Lord. I just look at it and whatever their name is, I just look, Lord bless James. Give him a miracle and call those names out to the Lord. And I know God hears me when I pray. Somebody say, yes, he does. Hallelujah. So we, we, we do pray. I thank God we are a, my ministry is a personal touch ministry. This is a personal ministry. We pray over, touch these requests. Touch these requests in your behalf because that's what God has called us to do. 
We're on another time on the Word Network every Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. It's right after midnight and, and Monday night at midnight and 1 a.m. on Tuesday morning. We got more calls this past Tuesday than we have in the other uh, programs in the past. So we got a new audience doing everything that we can to touch people with this ministry of Bible deliverance that Jesus is alive. And he's alive forevermore. Somebody say, oh, yes, he is. Glory to God. Well, one of these days we're going to get out of here. And we're going to tell this world goodbye. Come on, Bishop. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. This world which I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound for the city in the sky. I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on His word. Heaven is near. I can't stay here. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone And when I hear that last trumpet sound My feet won't stay on the ground I'm gonna rise at the shout I'm gonna fly Gonna meet my Lord in the sky Heaven is near I can't stay here Goodbye world, goodbye I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on his word. I'll never pine for I'll leave behind my heart and some cares forevermore. A day may be two, then goodbye. Goodbye to his cheer and his sign. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, world. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone Cause I won't have to leave here alone And when I hear that last trumpet sound My feet won't stay on the ground I'm gonna rise with the shout, I'm gonna fly Gonna meet my Lord in the sky Heaven is near, I can't stay here Goodbye, world That means ready to get out of here. Glory to God. We'll get up a load this morning and take off. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, by request, uh, we're going to ask Bishop to sing. Elders ask him to sing. Uh, he knows my name. Amen. And I know God uses me and has down through the years and given me people's names and uh, uh, their addresses and nicknames and their, their father's names and th th different things like that. And this woman came to me one time, and uh, she, you can be seated if you like, and she said, was talking to me about a certain preacher, and I knew he was false uh, because his wife, he had an uh, earpiece in his ear, and his wife read names off to him on the prayer cards behind a curtain, behind the stage. And he acted as though his words of knowledge to call people out. and Like uh, Woody Martin, 306 East Broadway. Whoa, that's me! And his wife was reading that behind the curtain. And this woman uh, told me, said, oh, he's a man of God. Said, he told me my name. And I, to which I replied, I said, well, if you don't need your own, if you don't know your own name, 
You probably need more help than what I can give you. That was Peter with a hearing aid deceiving millions of people. I've got a, I've got a book on false, how, how to test prophets. How do you test prophets? And people need to, you, you can shake any tree and a prophet will jump up. They could come out of the woodwork, especially since Facebook. Well, some of you need to get out of Facebook and get in the book, the Bible. Hello, hello, amen. Thank you. I got two amens and two claps. Hallelujah. But uh, that's one of the signs of the last day is deception. The very first thing that Jesus told his disciples, they said, Lord, What's going to be the sign of your coming, Matthew 24? And the very first thing that he said was to his own hand-picked disciples was, take heed that no man deceive you. Deception. And I told the Lord a long time ago, I said, Lord, I don't want to be deceived. I want to know the word of God. I want to know your word. I don't want nobody be able to back me in the corner when it comes to your word. And if you don't hear the word, you don't want to hear the word, don't come around here because you're going to hear the word around here. Amen. We don't tickle nobody's ears. Amen. We tell it like it is. Amen. I don't know why I got off on that. But anyway, we want Bishop. And I appreciate his uh, faithfulness. And he's going to be preaching here not too long. And we're going to have a visiting minister sometime this month. Uh, Pastor David Martin is going to preach one, one day. He, 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 we're, we're glad to have our visitors. Amen. And, uh, but uh, Bishop has been so faithful to uh, help us minister, even in revival. He's got his church, but he comes up here and helps us as, as much as possible. And I thank God he has the spirit of cooperation. Somebody say the spirit of cooperation. Amen. And we love him and Sister Joyce, and they've been friends for hours over 30 years. And uh, he has. They've been married 27 or 28 years now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but he's going to sing, and, and I appreciate that organ. Man, he just, he just, uh, I, I taught him everything he knows about this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I can't, I can't even play the radio without getting static, let alone play an instrument. But a lot of my family members were, and my sister Lois, oh, 86, she plays the, the uh, organ years ago. Yes, she did. And my brother Pete played the piano, Walter. And uh, But I guess uh, I was at the end of the line when the talent was given out to play music. But I sure can preach. Please, man. If you don't believe me, just ask me. Welcome, Bishop Drennan. Come on, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. I, I will say this. Uh, give me a little bit of more monitor. Uh, Brother Harry, so I don't feel like I'm competing with the meeting. Uh, we was in Memphis here a couple of years ago, Brother Martin and myself. I, I think Sister Martin was with us. And uh, uh, Brother Martin sung some, and I, I played behind him. And uh, they had a wonderful band out there, just absolutely wonderful band. And uh, their music director, extremely skilled pianist, come to me after the service and uh, Dr. Martin had sung a, a song I'm a Millionaire which is a staple of his ministry. He sings that all the time. And he come to me and he said uh, I'm wondering if you guys have the uh, lead sheets and the chord charts for uh, that song that uh, Prophet Martin did about being a millionaire. And I said the lead what? The chord what? And he's like well how did you play the song without a lead sheet? And I'm like, well, when you work with Brother Martin for 30 years, uh, you just learn to, wherever he goes, you just follow. And uh, so uh, he's, he said some nice things uh, a moment ago, and I just wanted to say that it's always been a privilege and a pleasure and an honor for me to uh, stand with my friend and my prophet and my pastor and my confidant and uh, some, someone that I can trust. Uh, there's not a lot of people in ministry today that you can trust. Uh, but I'm glad for folks that have integrity. Amen. Uh, and I'm glad that Jesus knows my name. Uh, this is the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Amen. 
Nothing like live programming equipment by Elvis. Sit, sit the green light and come up. Well, praise the Lord. There it is. That's fine. See, if we had a full time engineer, that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> All right. You can bring the monitors down just a little bit on this one. So I'm not. <laughs> He counts the stars, one and all. He knows the sand that's on the shore. He sees each sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He controls everything, all creation great and small. And he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name. If I'm overwhelmed by the pain, I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, because he knows my name. Oh, yes, he knows my name. I don't know what tomorrow might bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. Oh, I don't have all answers to the questions of life, but I know in whom I have believed, and he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name, if I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, because he knows my name. Oh, yes, he knows, he knows, he knows my name, and he knows my name, every step that I take. Every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name. If I'm overwhelmed by the pain, I can't see the light of day, but I know I'll be just fine, because he knows my name. Oh, yes, he knows. my name and he knows my name hallelujah Isaiah tells us the Lord says I have written you on the palm of my hand God has written your name on the palm of his hand he knows your name. Hallelujah. You remember when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead? He called him by his name. Somebody asked me one time, I said, what do you think would happen if he hadn't called Lazarus by name? I said, if he said, just come forth, he'd had a general resurrection right there. But he called him by his name. Oh, there's a dead man wrapped in grave clothes and a napkin over his face. And Jesus says, Lazarus, those eyes popped open. He probably said, somebody's calling my name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And Lazarus came out of that tomb, wrapped in glow, uh, grave clothes, and Jesus said, loose him. Take those grave clothes off of him. Loose him and let him go. Woo, glory to God. 
I'm glad he knows my name. Glory to God. Would you sing that one more time, just a, a second or one, another verse? Everybody say he knows my name. Glory to God. Let's have some church oh, here yes, today. Sir. I don't know what tomorrow might bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. Listen, church, I, I don't have all the answers to the questions of life, but I know in whom I believe, and he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry and he knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain I can't see the light of day but I know I'll be just fine cause he knows my name oh yes he does he knows he knows he knows he knows he knows he knows Come on, say it. He knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear I've laid awake and not and cried. Oh, he knows my name. I'm overwhelmed by the pain. I can't see the light of day. But I know I'll be just fine. Cause he knows my name. Oh yes, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows, he knows my name.
when the message comes, your loved one is dead. Say to be happy when nothing seems right. Faith. Faith to believe that everything's going to be fine. I've got faith in the Father and faith in the Son. Sister Martin, come up here. I'm going to let her sing. Amen. Amen. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Do you love the Lord today? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to have some church here today. Oh, oh, oh. Glory to God. we got people all the way from Macon, Georgia. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's greet them. Where are you folks from? Knox Hill. Praise God. And we've got uh, two or three from Lenore City, it looks like. Praise God, man. We're, going, we're booming on for Jesus. Come on over here, pretty thing. I love you. I love you. And she, she is so pretty. Amen. Glory to God. Her and Lisa went shopping another day, and she went and got her some sweaters. And uh, she came back, and she said, well, spent all my money. I said, well, I'll just give you some more. Amen. I encourage her to, to dress nice. I want her to look nice. I want her to look good. Not just because of television and Facebook. I want her to look good for me. Amen. And I don't mind any man looking at my wife just as long as you don't look too close now. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say something for the Lord. Then we'll sing your favorite song. Yes. That's my favorite song. Because every time I say that, he keeps right on blessing me. Mm -hmm. He just keeps right on blessing yes, he me. Does. <laughs> you know, you can have what you say. Your words are created. So when I say he keeps right on blessing me, he does. I had, uh, I needed a Bible. Y'all saw my Bible. And, of course, we had plenty of them at home. But I just want to thank God for my new Bible that my I have Bible, now. Right. And yeah. it just feels like it just fits my hand. Uh, yeah. And I just thank God for my new Bible. Praise <laughs> the Lord. She, she, she told me, she said, I just like the feel of it. Said, I just, yes. It feels like it's coming right into yes. me. She's reading that word. There's life in that word. There's power in yes. the word. Glory power. to God. Uh, we, we probably word. got 40 or 50 Bibles at the house. I've got all kinds <laughs> of Bibles at the house. But she wanted this type of Bible, and she got it. And yes. praise God. She's pleased with it. Amen. Very Lord God. Yes. And what I like about Happy. it, the print's not so small that you have to get three magnifying glasses to, <laughs> to read it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you folks, your arms are getting shorter. Yes. As you get older. <laughs> All right, he just keeps right on. Blessing. Blessing me. This is the clapping song. Come on, clap your hands. Stop. 
Hallelujah. And and listen. Oh, I'm sorry. I sat up on you. I'm sorry. Oh, I, well, if I don't make you that happy, I'm going to step on you again. I stepped on her toe. Woo. Most people cry. When I'm you step laughing on. so I won't cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. They call me Bigfoot in those days. <laughs> but I want, I want the church, I want everybody to know I love her. In less than three weeks, December the 10th, four, about four weeks, will be our anniversary. We've got it on Facebook. Uh, our, uh, what is it, 57? Yeah. 57th anniversary coming up in, in about less than four weeks. Yeah, yeah. December the 10th, we have been married 57, 57 years. years. And I thank God for that. Bless you, honey. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Should I have the prayer line right now and pray for your toe or you want me to wait a while? Oh, I'll live. <laughs> Give Peggy Martin. God bless you. Would you do that, please? Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I believe we have more fun than anybody, don't you? Amen. Laughter, laughter, laughter. Glory to God. He filled my mouth with laughter. Glory to God. I want you to know I'm happy in Jesus. Every day of Jesus is sweeter than the day before. I'm going to sing one more song. I haven't sung in weeks, and I know you find this hard to believe, but we haven't sung in several weeks. King Jesus. So we're going to sing it today. Glory to God. We if you need a miracle, do you need a miracle? Let me tell you what to do. Call on my King Jesus. Your miracle's coming through, King Jesus. I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you ever been in trouble? He'll come walking right by your way. Well, if you need a miracle, let me tell you what to do. Call on my Jesus, your miracle's coming through me, Jesus. I know you hear me when I go When I'm down here in trouble, you come walking by my way. i 
heaven. I'm gonna sing and shout. There won't be nobody to kick me out. Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down or in trouble, Lord, you come and walk me by my way. today. Amen. Nothing like live music. Amen. Glory to God. At least sometimes it's live. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to be in the house of God today and to see all these people out and to come to be in the house of the Lord. You know, you've uh, you got up, you got dressed, you took a bath, well, hopefully, and uh, uh, you put on some of that good, sweet-smelling stuff, and you got on your Sunday best, so now let's have some church, all right? My mother taught me when I was a child, every Saturday night, we laid our clothes out, what was going to wear to church that next day, done that for years, I still do that today, I'm 77 years old, and my mother taught me to prepare and get ready for Sundays. Sunday school, so we we just had about two or three changes of clothes, but we'd get the best that we had and lay it out. Amen. Now they come. Now they come to church. They look like they come out of the wilderness. Amen. The dirtier they look, the better people like it. I'm just serious. But anyway, I think we ought to give God our best. Even when I give offerings, if I've got an old wrinkled up twenty dollar bill, I won't give. I look for the best one I've got. I look. I look for a clean. $20 bill or a $100 bill, whatever whatever I'm giving. I just think we ought to give God our best. Give, give God the first 10 minutes of your morning. Talk to Him. Even before you get out of bed, talk to Him. Pray in the Spirit. And thank Him that He's blessed you to see another day. Hallelujah. Someone was questioning me in, uh, recently about our longevity, Peggy and I. And the Bible says, uh, if you'd honor your father and your mother, your days might be long on the face of this earth. And we both did. She did to her parents, and I did to my mother. My father died when I was sick. But uh, there's a lot to that that's, that increases your longevity on this earth when you honor those. A person that dishonors you, a person that dishonors a minister, a man of God or a woman of God, they dishonor God. And that person is capable of committing the worst act on the face of this earth. We've come to the place where we don't respect the house of God, nor the man of God or the woman of God. Amen? I wish my church would have showed up that amen every now and then. Amen. Thank you. Yesterday was Veterans Day. And I thank God for our veterans. I salute our veterans. I do. Let's give our veterans a God bless you. Hallelujah. I'm glad that we had that day yesterday to honor the veterans, and I'm glad that some of the restaurants in this area gave our veterans a free meal. Amen. And uh, I wish that our veterans could get as uh, good of benefits as those people do on welfare. 
and get them as quickly, if not quicker. Our, and I'm not preaching about veterans, even though I, we, I thank God we honor them. And uh, it's, this is what's in the news recently. Uh, the professional sports, professional football players, uh, no longer respect the flag or the Star Spangled Banner. And they are protesting, and they're kneeling instead of, we got Deacon Daly, he's a veteran here, and, and uh, we thank God. Randy Glenn's one of our members, he's a veteran, and we thank God for our veterans, and if I'm overlooking you, forgive me. But I, I think these, these people should be honored, not just one day, but every day of the year. And our professional sports whom our young people look up to and idolize these football and basketball players. Uh, one football player that plays for the uh, Seattle Seahawks made this statement that he felt like a slave because he didn't have the ability to be a person. And it offended him that they wanted him to stand in honor of our flag and the veterans of the United States of America that really give him the privilege to make $11 million a year in this free country. And I just, I chuckled when I read that and when I heard that. He felt like a slave and he makes $11 million a year? I don't know of any slaves that made $11 million a year. Hello? And actually, it's, it's only about six months out of the year. Exhibition games and training. So he's getting $11 million a year for playing football. And that same man in Las Vegas, I'm talking about honoring our veterans. That same man in Las Vegas got into it with the law, got drunk, and then he claimed Police brutality. You know, halt means halt. You're under arrest means you're under arrest. Stop means stop. Amen? Everybody. And he told the police officer, do you know who I am? Don't you know? No, he didn't know who he was just because he played football. I'm going somewhere with this. And they kicked it out. He took him to court, kicked it out of court, court for lack of evidence. I think this could be called the rebellious generation because this is a rebellious generation that is even filtered down to high school sports. High school football players are now are not standing for the national anthem. They're kneeling. Where did they learn that? Where did they, they learn that from those rebellious crybaby millionaires. I'm not going to get no eight mans here this morning. I don't feel sorry for nobody making $11 million a year. Some of you will never make that in your lifetime. And he makes that in six months? In six months, he makes 11, and it's a full contract. If he gets hurt, he gets all of his money. This, this has gotten out of hand. In the paper this week, the... Uh, Manager of TVA makes $4.9 million a year. And 2008, now that was last year, and he's going to get a raise this year. So he'll make over $5 million. The common man can't relate to that. Makes you wonder where the money's coming from. And if people don't get their way, if these kids, if you don't, if you don't do what they do, they tell you to, they'll burn the place down. They'll burn the school down. I'm saying we're living in a rebellious generation. I notice even in the peewee football, grasshoppers, some of those little kids kneel down. They always play the national anthem. I want to honor our veterans. They play the national anthem at all sporting events. And the little peewee players, 7, 8, 10 years old, kneel down and wouldn't respect the flag. Where did they learn that? 
than those rebellious millionaires. Listen to me. And their coach told them, and I thank God for this, he said, if you all want to play football, you better get up here and salute this flag. Don't let that sink in. Veterans that are watching today, we love you. We thank God for you. We honor you for your dedication. Some of them came back and mangled bodies and missing limbs. And they did that so we could have freedom of worship here this morning and freedom of speech. God bless America. Amen. 22 veterans every day average commit suicide. I've never read in the paper one of those millionaire football ever, players ever committed suicide. Making millions of dollars every year. So it's quiet in here. I reiterate, we need to honor those that gave their lives in the armed forces for us and those that are Agent Orange today. I've got some friends of mine that have that Agent Orange. They got a NAM. We need to pray for our veterans. 22 veterans a day average commit suicide. Nightmare. War going through our minds. We just push them aside somewhere. Our veterans' hospitals are dilapidated. They're not clean. Have the poorest doctors on the face of this earth running those places. Hello? But yet, I believe that welfare benefits should be as hard to get as veterans' benefits. I know some of them right now. They, they can't hardly get no benefit. I'm saying I want to honor these veterans every day and thank them for their service. I've got friends that tell me even though they're sick in their body and afflicted in their body and their bodies mingled and so forth, I would do it again because I love my country. I'm not going to get a lot of amens this morning. Amen. I, I'm going to preach on rebellion. And your Bible says in 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, in verse 23, that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And God told Saul, because you have rejected my word, I'm going to reject you from being king over Israel. Rebellion is a spirit of witchcraft. I've had it here in this church. I have it in my, my employees that work in the office, rebellion, rebellion, rebelling against authority. Amen. You know, I think that nicest person that you should be good to is somebody that signs your check. In fact, about it, how many of, how many of you, God's ever written you a check? God's never written you a check. But God favors you with man I said, God can favor you with man to where you can get a good check. Oh, yes. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. If a man's ways pleases the Lord, that's my number one goal. I want to please God. And if I please God, it doesn't make any difference to me if I please you or not. But I believe if I please God, I'll get favor with you as well. Rebellion. Is as the sin of witchcraft. Children rebelling against their parents. They want to go to school. Don't want to go to school. Don't want to study. Don't want to read. And I know this is not a shouting message. Rebellion takes on many different forms. Hello? Rebellion can start at the head and just trickle on down. Re rebellion can start in one person in the family and it'll affect the whole family. Because those spirits minister to you. Rebellious spirits. And I have to rebuke those type of spirits that come up against me and you. Amen. So, the Lord says that rebellion is as sin. Uh, witchcraft is as a sin. It is a sin. Which, everybody say witchcraft is a sin. 
Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And when we think of rebellion, we think of some foreign country or Haiti or Africa or uh, some foreign country. There's rebellion in churches right here in this city today, this morning, and in your church. Those that refuse authority. The shepherd watches for your soul. A good shepherd would lay down his life for his sheep. And when I, I have told many people, like I shared with you earlier about this woman saying this man was a great man, man of God. He was a false prophet. He's a con man. Got his information through his wife. He had an earpiece in his ear, and she would read the address of different people, and he would call it out like as a word of knowledge. She was behind the curtain, and they'd call out, uh, Renee Reed, uh, Rockwood, Tennessee. And Renee would go, wow, that's my name. And his wife was reading that behind the curtain in the earpiece. That's deception. That's witchcraft. I said it's witchcraft. And I'm going to stand against it, glory to God. Cry out and spare not and lift up my voice like a trumpet. I'm not in a popularity contest. I'm trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half just ain't going to do. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Go with me, if you would, please, to Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter. It's going to get good here after a while. I'm going to, I'm going to open up the wound, but I'll put some salt in it. And we'll... I come here today for you to call me out. I'm going to call you in first. I'm thankful for these powerful charismatic Pentecostal gifts of the Spirit that God has deposited in my life and these ministers that I bring in and Prophetess Davis. And by the way, she'll be back December the 31st. Amen. But there's sometimes you need something other than a personal prophecy. You need a rhema word from God in your life. Why did God reject Saul from being king over Israel? Because he rejected the word of God. He rejected, he rejected, he rejected the word of God. Down through the years, people get mad at me. I, I preach the truth, preach, preach the Bible to them that get mad at me. Well, I'll just go to church over yonder. Well, the God, the Word of God is the same over yonder as it is over here. If that preacher over yonder will preach the truth. And I only tell you the truth because I love you. I said, I tell you the truth because I love you. Amen. A man asked me one time, said, if somebody broke into your house, would you shoot them? I said, probably twice. To make sure they're dead. Well, I thought you was a preacher. I am going to protect my family. And any man that will not protect his family is not a man. He's an infidel. You don't provide for your family. You're, the Bible says worse than an infidel. I don't know how bad that is, but that's bad, bad. I'm going to show you something here. When Jesus called these disciples, he sent them out. He said, don't take no script. That's money. Don't take no purse. Don't. That was a, like a pouch on the, their shoulder and halfway down their side. He said, don't even take no shoes. Good night. Can I read it to you? Luke's Gospel, the 22nd chapter, and verse 35. He's talking to Peter. Peter just said that he would go with the Lord all the way, and Jesus rebuked him and told him that he, Peter, would deny him three times through the rooster crowing. He would be reminded. Verse 34 tells you that. Verse 35, and he tells Peter, when he said unto him, Peter, when I sent you without purse and scrip, no money, I sent you without shoes. Jesus says, did you lack anything? And Peter said, nothing. We didn't lack nothing. That's the first time he sent them out. He told them not to take no purse. Don't take no script, no money. Don't take no shoes. 
Most of them wore sandals in Bible days. And when I was a kid, I, I didn't even put a shoe on in the summertime. I, I was barefooted every day. But your feet get conditioned for things like that. And that's the reason Paul said, How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. Knowing that those feet has toiled on hard ground and stones and rocks and briars and sticks and glass and so forth. So he says, when I sent you out, did you like anything? They said, nothing. No, Lord. But now I'm going to send you out again. Listen, verse 36. He said unto them, but now. Everybody say now. Everybody say now. When is faith? Hebrews 11, 1, now faith is. God wants to move now. God wants to bless now. God wants to heal now. God wants to prosper now. God wants to get rid of your enemies now. Somebody say now three times. If it's not now, it cannot be faith because now faith is. Now faith is. Not tomorrow, not the next day, but now. If it's not now, it can't be faith. Now faith is. Somebody shout now faith. And then Jesus said in verse 36, he says, but now I want you to, to take a purse. If you got a purse, take it with you. Wonder why he wants them to take a purse. Because they're going to get some money, honey. Ain't no need carrying a purse if you ain't going to put no money in it. Unless it's like my watch. It's got everything in there except the kitchen sink. She was in a meeting one time, Peggy was praying. I, she, didn't, she didn't tell me this after it's over. Well, after she got the, the blessing, she said, Lord, I said, I want my own money. My husband's good to me. He gives me money. Anytime I, I need money, he gives me money. But I want my own money without asking anybody. And a woman came up to her a few days later and gave her 500 cash dollars. I said, you need to pray that at Victory Temple. Did, did you pray that yet, honey, at Victory Temple? Oh, you little faith. So Jesus said, if you got a purse, take it with you. Verse 36. If you have a purse, take it. And likewise, scrip, that's money. If you got any money, take your money with you. Why? The, it's going to be harder the second time than it was the first time you went out. The older I get, it's harder to minister to people in this time than it was 20 years ago. My God, 20 years ago, you could have revival and people come and stand on the outside to get in. You can't do that no more. It don't happen nowadays. It was easier back then than it is now. Why? Because there is a departing of the faith in this last day. So Jesus said, now this time, I want you to take your purse. I want you to take your money. Watch it. Let me read it. But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip and his money. And he that hath no sword, let him sell one of his garments and buy a sword. Why is he wanting them to buy a sword? To fight with. What is the choice weapon of ISIS when they kill Christians? Cut their heads off with swords. Listen to me. I'm talking about honoring our veterans and honoring the house of God and the man of God and respecting. The Bible says that judgment, the day will come when judgment will start in the house of God. No judgment's going to fall if preachers don't preach against it. Everybody wants that feel-good spirit, that feel-good blessing. Oh, yes, and we believe in that. We're going to get you blessed. But we're going to get you blessed with the Word of God as well. Can I read that one more time? Verse 36. First time he told them not to take no script, no purse, no shoes, nothing. Did you lack anything? No. God fed them every day. That's what faith is. I said, that's what faith is. He said, this time when you go out, if you got a purse, take it. If you got any script, got any money, take it. If you don't have no sword, you sell one of your garments and you buy a sword. 
to protect yourself. I reiterate, someone asked me, if somebody broke in your house, would you shoot them? I said, yes, I would, most definitely. And I said, I'd probably shoot them twice to make sure they was dead. Just because you're a Christian, that doesn't give the world permission to walk over you. A man's supposed to take care of his house, his wife, and his children. I say rebellion. I'm going to say something that's going to upset some people. But what's new? I have weighed what I'm about to say. And every tragedy that comes along, every tragedy, Invariably, somebody will jump up and say, Oh, God's in control. Oh, God's, is he? Is he really in control? Was he in control uh, last week when that atheist went into that Baptist church in Texas? He was an atheist and he was looking for his mother in law. He's going to kill his mother in law. And he went to that church and his mother in law wasn't even there. And he started shooting the people in the church. Oh, God's in control. God, was God in control there? Listen, I've weighed what I'm about to say. Don't get mad at me. Listen to what i got to say first. Even though he taunted the children that were in there. One man lying on the floor. What was the total that got killed out there? 20, how many? 26 people. Children. Women and children. And an atheist goes into the house of God and kills 26 people and wounds others looking for his mother-in-law. He was mad at his mother-in-law. And he killed those innocent people right in the house of God. Oh, God's in control. No, God's not in control. The demons, the devil's in control. Two weeks ago when uh, a lady over in Maryville, Karen Hedrick, killed and burned her own mother, who was a Christian. Was God in control? Christian women get raped. Is God in control? Twenty U2 students last year in Knoxville got raped. Was God in control? The bottom line is God is, is not in control every, in everything on this earth. Was God in control when uh, all these floods come? Is God in control when ISIS kill Christians? Was God in control? Was God, God told us through the word Matthew 24, in the last day there would be earthquakes, there would be floods, unusual weather patterns in the last day. That's going to happen. But Ephesians 2 and 2 says, Satan is the prince of the air. <laughs> and these insurance companies get out of paying the premium. They call it acts of God. It's not acts of God. It's acts of the devil. John 10. Somebody tell me what John 10 and 10 says. It's the devil that comes to kill, seal, and destroy. God, all these storms, they got mad at President Trump because he didn't go out there and take his big straw and suck all that water out of Puerto Rico. They had that flood there. God's in control, is he? God in control when that man in New York rented a Home Depot truck. The bicyclers and the tourists ran over them. It was ISIS, evil, evil, evil on the face of this earth. Darkness on the face of this earth. God give us a preacher that will cry against sin, cry out and spare not, and lift up his voice like a trumpet and show people their sins. God's not in control of everything.
rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Can I read that scripture one more time? I want this to seek in. Jesus says, but now, everybody say now. I'll talk about now in just a minute. I'm going to get you blessed now. We got people drove all the way from Macon, Georgia. I'm going to get them blessed now, today, before this service is over. But I've got to tell you what God put on my heart. We've got another friend in Macon, Georgia, James Davis. He's watching right now, I believe. He came from Macon three Saturdays ago. Prophet Davis is here. Sat over there, and God healed him. He said, that was the best thing I ever did in my life, driving to Victory Temple from Macon, Georgia, about a four-hour drive. Sat over there, and God healed him. He said, it's been over a week now, and I haven't had no pain in my body. It's been years. I've had pain in my body for years, but God healed me when I came to the Victory Temple Church. Thank God I'm glad that we're known as a healing center, a deliverance church. But now, Jesus said, I sent you out the first time. You like anything, you didn't like nothing. But now, first time I sent you out, you went without shoes, without money, you went out of purse. But now, everybody say, but now. But now this time I'm going to send you out again. Take your purse. Take your money. And if you don't have a sword, sell one of your garments and buy you a sword because you're going to need it. Oh, I just don't believe it. You remember when Peter cut the serp- the high priest's servant's ear off? He took a, what did he take? What did he take? He took a sword and sliced that man's ear off. The servant of the high priest. Jesus looked around, reached over and picked that ear up and went, <laughs> blowed the dust off of it and stuck it back on there. Now, don't look for blow the dust off of it in King James. It's not there. That's Woody Martin's interpretation. Jesus took that man's ear and stuck it back on there. You know what Jesus was doing? He was destroying the evidence against Peter because that was a capital offense. Had not Jesus done that, there would have been four crosses that day instead of three. They would have crucified Peter as well. Hello? But Jesus is thinking, I don't want Peter to die on that cross. I just put that ear back on. Didn't even leave a scar. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I like to hear me preach. If it don't bless me, how's it going to bless you? If you don't have a sword, get you a sword. Now, I know some people are not comfortable with a gun, but I'm going to tell you, somebody tries to hurt my family, you're going to have to deal with me. And I do have a sword got more than that too these two men want to rob this woman two men are going to rob this woman she's a sanctified Holy Ghost filled woman she said Acts 238 Acts 238 Acts 238 Acts 238 one guy looked at them and said we better get out of here she said, she's got an Acts and 238 in that purse Whew, they ran off But now, this time, now when you go out, take your purse, take your script, take your money, and take your one of your garments, you don't have a sword, and buy you a sword. Now, would you go with me to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. We, we can just quote it. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is. When is faith? And remember when Jesus told us that now I'm going to send you out. Now, now, now. Everybody say now. We're going to concentrate on now, November the 12th, 2017. Now, this day. Everybody say now. Now faith is. The substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You can't see faith. You can't see your miracle, but by faith you say it exists. I'm believing God for my miracle. You've got to put faith in the now. And if it's not now, it's not faith. They say tomorrow never comes. I'm going to get 
healed tomorrow and the next revival, I'm going to get healed. I'll get saved in the next revival. Or I'll do this and I'll do that. And, you know, it never comes. But now is now. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Had a woman in this city uh, years ago said when Or Roberts got his hospital built in Tulsa, she was going to go out there and get healed of cataracts. Had been to this church. Had witnessed other people. Had witnessed Mom Daly getting her eyes healed of cataracts. There's a doctor in East Tennessee told Mom Daly she died at 92 or 3, Deacon. 94. One of the best members, one of the most loyal, faithful members I've ever had. She, we baptized her, remember? She was about, I don't know how old she was. She said, I want to be baptized by a Holy Ghost filled preacher. I want to be baptized by my preacher. And honey, we took her down to uh, Polecat Creek and baptized her along with others. And uh, this woman had heard Mom Daly testify. Two do a doctor told her she had cataracts in both eyes. God healed her in this church. I said, God healed her in this church. Can you hear me now? God healed those, dissolved those cataracts in this church. She goes back to that same doctor. I got this on video. Not what the doctor said, but what the, she said the doctor said. And that doctor examined her and said, they're gone. And she said, I knew what he was talking about. I said, what's gone? He said, the cataracts are gone. She said, I want to hear him say it. Oh, she was a woman of wisdom. And he said, what happened? She said, well, and she told it like it was. She said, my pastor, Woody Martin, prayed for me, and God healed me. Right here in this church, that woman that wanted to go to Tulsa get her healing, she never did get her eyes healed. Never did get her eyes healed. gospel was preached unto her as well as to mom daily but the gospel preacher didn't help her or profit her why when she heard that word she didn't mix it with faith I preached an awesome message two weeks ago about that why some people receive and some don't receive someone messaged me and said I I wish I could be as knowledgeable as you as you are I've been doing this over 50 years somebody does the same thing for 50 years they should get good at it. And I've had people, they want to mimic me or pattern their lives. After my ministry, Shane Williams, my son-in-law, he told them Friday night at TV 48, said everything I know about the deliverance ministry, I, my father-in-law taught me, he said the first miracle I ever saw in my life was at Victory Temple Church in Lawrence City, Tennessee. Now he's pastoring over in Crossville, Tennessee, been there 15 years, doing the same work over there that we're doing here. Tell me, I want to be a minister. <clears throat> well, memorize some scriptures. I told one person, I said, I want you to memorize seven scriptures, and in a week's time, I want you to quote them and tell me where they're at. They struggled through it. Probably hadn't read the Bible since. You have to have a heart for God. I said you have to have a heart for God and a heart for souls. When they hurt, you hurt if you care about them. If you care about God and the sick and suffering, you will care about them. They may not be related to you, but as a shepherd, you care for them. That woman died in this city. Wasn't a member of this church. She came here several times. But she didn't fully believe my ministry because I didn't baptize the way that she That, boy, that's a big question with a lot of people. They want to know, how do you baptize? Well, we baptize in water here. How do you baptize? Sixty different branches of Pentecostalism. Sixty different branches. They all believe in the baptism in the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues. But, oh, after that, start splitting hairs. You can't worship on Sunday. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't 
wear makeup. You can't wear a dress. You can't wear slacks. You can't do kink, 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 kink. Serving God is not a bunch of don'ts. Some of you remember D. Young from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Her and her sons came here, business people. And, uh, man, she's a beautiful, attractive woman and uh, nice hair and uh, ruby red lipstick. I mean, uh, she came in one night, and I prophesied to her, and I didn't see that makeup, and I didn't see her hair, and I didn't see those false eyelashes. I just saw a person. And she came in decked out like a Christmas tree. And then when I prophesied to her, she lit up like one. And the first thing the devil told me said, what's your church going to think? You prophesied to a Jezebel. Testing one, two. Can you hear me now? But obviously God didn't see all that makeup. You know, these man-made rules. We've driven more people away from church than we'll ever get back in with that type of attitude. And you can't eat a fish until you first catch it and clean it. You can't clean the fish until you catch it. We've got to catch the people. I believe in modest apparel. I believe that men and women should dress in modest apparel. You've got to get them saved. Let the Holy Ghost teach them how to dress. Now faith is. When is faith? Everybody say, if it's not now, it's not faith. If it's not now, it's not faith. Faith doesn't make things easy. Faith makes things possible. Can I say that again? Faith doesn't, if it's easy, everybody would have it. Doesn't make it easy, but it makes things possible. The great educator Brooker T. Washington said these words. I have begun everything that I did with the idea that I would succeed. Ooh, Jesus. My God. He said, everything that I did, I did it with the idea that I would succeed. Well, you know, he's, he's quoting Philippians 4, 19. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. What's wrong with that? Oh, Brother Long, we can't do that now. You know, you, we better take our time about this. You know we just can't do that. You, you know, you've got that big old church up there. How are you going to pay for it? Well, we pay for it in 23 months. That's how we got it. 23 months, but paid cash. This church bought and paid for in 23 months. And God used your pastor. I used my negotiating skills to save this ministry $40,000 when we bought this building. I tell some of my younger, younger folks, I said, when you go buy a car, take me with you. And I'll get you a good deal, but I'm going to charge you $200 for my negotiating skills because I don't work for nothing. A labor is worth his hire. Amen. And God told me about two years ago he was going to increase my communication skills. There are a lot of preachers and teachers that are good teachers and good preachers but they can't communicate with the people. That's a gift. That's a gift. That preached at the lighthouse years ago, Bishop Spires. One Sunday morning, it's pouring down rain. They seat about uh, 1,000, about 1,200 was the overflow room, and having about 1,000 people every Sunday morning, it just pouring down rain. And Bishop said, Prophet said, our crowd's going to be off this morning. He said, we just got about 700 people. I said, that's all right, Bishop. These small crowds don't bother me. Ever say now? Faith is substance of things hoped for. Hope, hope for. But it's the evidence. You can't see it. But faith says you have already got it. How 
how stupid is that to the world? You, you, I, in this church, a man told me, he said, I'm not going to confess something I can't see. I said, Vernon, have you got a brain? Do you have a brain? Yes. I said, can you see your brain? No. Duh. Wake up. Wake up. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I've never started a project that I didn't see myself being successful in that project, Brooker T. Washington. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now faith is. How, how, how could you be telling a lie? You're confessing the word of God. This word is not a lie. It's true. It's true. You cannot be confessing a lie. God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man to repent. Hath he not spoken it? And shall he not make it good? He will do what he says he'll do if you'll get your confession right. Now, faith is. Somebody say it again. Now, faith is. Give me about 10 more minutes. Let's go to Romans. You folks from Macon, are you enjoying this? I, I see y'all. You're with me. Amen. Romans, the 8th chapter. No, let's go to the 6th chapter, then we'll go to the 8th chapter. Years ago, we teamed up two by twos. This church, years ago, knocked on every door in Little City by twos. We sent teams knocking on every... Boy, the Jehovah Witnesses would have been proud of us. Was up there not inviting people to Victory Temple. I was with somebody one night. I don't know who it was. It was all teams, several teams. Of, we'd take this section, that section, and so forth. I knocked, knocked on a man's door and told him what we was doing. We not invite him to Victory Temple. He said, I'm Roman Catholic. I said, I am too. I said, I'm Roman all over Lower City telling people about Jesus. He's roaming around out here. Needless to say, he didn't come. But I witnessed to him anyhow. Now in Romans, the sixth chapter, verse 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Question. Shall we continue in sin after we have been saved? And as some people pre preach and teach, you have to sin a little bit every day. Our Calvinist friends teach that, and they teach that you can't die wrong. I'll show you in the Scripture. They teach you you can't live right, but you can't die wrong. Shall we continue in sin? We've been saved. We've been washed. We've been Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Paul says, God forbid. God forbid. Verse 2. He says, no, verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death? There's seven baptisms mentioned in the Bible. Not one, not two. You mention baptism 100% of the time. People think either water or Holy Spirit. But there's baptism is death, baptism is resurrection, and there's seven baptisms. I preached that a little while back. But shall we continue in sin? Grace may abound. He said, God forbid. Look at verse 6, Romans 6 and verse 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed henceforth, we should not serve sin. Look at the 6th chapter and verse 22. Romans 6 and 20. Watch this. But now being made free from sin. But now being made free. Being made free from sin. 
When are we free from sin? Now, which means you don't have to sin more or less every day. If you can sin every day and go to heaven, what did you get saved to start with for? See, salvation, the Lord will keep you from sin. I said he keep you from sin, but now we're free. I'm free from sin. When? Now I am free from sin and become the servant to God. You have your fruit unto holiness, verse 22, and the end everlasting life. But now being made free from sin, you become the servant of God. You have your fruit unto holiness. That means holy living. But now being made free, thank God, I am free, free, free from this life of sin. Been washed in the blood of Jesus. I've been born again. Hallelujah. I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Free from sin. But now, I want to send you up the second time on the internet. But now, this time, take your script, take your purse, take your shoes. And if you don't have a sword, get you a sword. Send them out the first time. Why did he say that? Because the second time is going to be harder than the first time. But now being made free from sin, we have our fruits unto holiness. And in the end, everlasting life. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at verse 1 in chapter 8. There is therefore now. When? There is therefore now. Somebody say now three times. Praying yesterday in this church, and God spoke to me three times. Does anybody know what the Lord, did anybody see my Facebook post yesterday? What did I say the Lord spoke to me three times? Renewal. Right here, I'm praying. He said, renewal, renew, renew, renew. God's going to renew some things in your life. God's going to renew broken relationships. God's going to, I prophesy to you, that God's going to renew things in your marriages. I got one a half a clap on that one. Some of you don't want it renewed. Let me get over here and preach a little bit. I believe God can give you a new man or a new husband or a new wife without getting a divorce. God can change the one you got. Now being made free from sin. Free from sin when? Now. Romans 8 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit, verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ hath made me free from the law of sin and death. True Christians do not practice sin. I know of preachers that will lie to you. Knowing it's a lie. I said preachers. And your Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. How many of them? Amen. And even you that lie on your income taxes as well, that's a lie. A lie, a lie is a lie. You've got to render to Caesar the things that be a Caesar. Oh, ain't nobody shouting here now. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. It's going to get good after a while. Let's look at verse... Verse 9. Let's look at verse... Can I take my time? Look at verse 7. Romans 8 and verse 7. Well, let's look at verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
Because a carnal mind is enmity against God. It's an enemy of God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There it is. Yep, mm, there it is, Brother Martin. You're in the flesh. You can't please God. He says, but you're not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if so be the Spirit of Christ dwell in you. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, you don't even belong to Christ. Leroy, see if that ladder's over here in this storage room, the step ladder. Please. So they that are in the, over here, the ladder, step ladder. Step ladder right over there. It should be, if it's, uh, if it's not there, we'll just, it should be there. But they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, the Spirit of Christ dwell in you. Right there, right there. Open it up. Now turn it around the other way, please. All the way around. All the way. There. No, 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 no. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, the Spirit of Christ dwell in you. If you're saved, say, I've got the Spirit of Christ in me. Mm -hmm. You're free from sin. Look at verse uh, 15. For you have not received the spirit of bondage. Some churches put you in bondage. They're legalistic. They say that you have to observe a certain day to keep the Sabbath. Paul warned us of those that uh, talked about holy days. You're not saved by keeping a Sabbath. You're saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, or Daddy God. We have been adopted into the family of God. And we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy God, because He's your Father. Daddy God. Verse 16, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how we know that we're saved because we have the Spirit of God. You remember that religious man, Nicodemus, John 3, that came to Jesus by night? He said, oh, we know you've come from God because no man can do these miracles that you're doing except God be with him. And Jesus gave him the plan of salvation, how to be saved, how to be born again. How can a man, when he's old, he says, be born again? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb? You don't understand, Nick. That's flesh. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said to you, you must, you must, you must be born again. And that's our hat. the reason I had Leroy bring this ladder out. I want to show you in just a moment. So we have not received the spirit of bondage, but I've been adopted into the family of God. When children are adopted into families, they take the biological name most times of the family that adopts them. Like if they came from uh, the Jones family, but the Smith family adopted them, most of the times they take on the Smith name of the person that adopts them. Well, when, I took, when God adopted me into his family, I took on the name of Jesus. I'm adopted into his family. Hallelujah. My name's Woody Martin, but I'm adopted into the family of God, and you are my brothers and my sisters in the Lord if you know Jesus as your Savior. Whereby we cry, Abba, Abba, Daddy God, Abba, Father. Daddy God. Why? We've been adopted into the family of God. Let's drop down to verse 18. You know, People make fun of us hillbillies, the way we talk. You all, you in 
oranges, Mama Nims. Thanksgiving's coming up. How many is going over to Mama Nims? You going to go over at Mama Nims? They're kind of M and M's. Mama Nims. They make fun of our southern drawl. Well, Paul was from the south. Look at verse eighteen. He says, "For I reckon." that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I reckon you're going to go to church Saturday? Well, I reckon. You're going to go to the mall Saturday? Well, I reckon. Paul said, I reckon. Glory to God. I reckon the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Glory to God. I reckon. I reckon it's going to be worth it when we get there, don't you? I reckon it'll be all right when we see Jesus. I reckon everything's going to be all right. I reckon. You need to get that book, How to Speak Southern. <laughs> oh. So let me read that again, verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He said in verse 9, but you're not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be, the Spirit of Christ dwell in you. Now this is years ago and I'm praying. You that are watching my Facebook, somebody send us $100 so we can get a new ladder. Got good props here at Victory Temple. I think somebody gave it to us. They dug it out of a dump somewhere. All right. I'm praying. And I said, Lord, and I believe in the rapture. If you believe in the resurrection, you believe in the rapture. <laughs> if you don't believe in the rapture, you're going to stay here dead. The dead in Christ is going to rise first, the dead in Christ. I'm, I'm praying, I said, Lord, how are you going to get everybody up there at the same time? At the rapture or the second coming, however how you want to phrase it. Either way, how, how are you going to call the Baptist church here? I believe they're saved Baptists. I was a Baptist at one time. Pastor in a Baptist church in my own business. And God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Had to leave that church due to difficulties beyond my control. I preached the Holy Ghost to him before I left. How are you going to get the Baptists up there and the Catholics and the, the Nazarenes and all those that have been saved? He said, Son, I will call nobody's name. I will call no denomination. I will call no names, no Baptist church. I will not call Woody Martin's name. I will not call Leroy Chambers' name. I will not call Chris Webb's name. I will not call Renee Reed's name. I will not call Peggy Martin's name. I said, God, how are you going to do it? He said, I'm going to call my spirit up. And everyone that has my spirit, everyone that has my spirit, Every, that's the reason you got to be born again to have the Spirit of Christ. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you don't even belong to Him. And I say, He said, I'll call my Spirit up at the rapture, at the second coming, at the gathering, however you want to call it. He said, Spirit, come up hither. Spirit, come up hither. Spirit, come up hither. And every single person that has been born again, saved, and filled with the Spirit of God is going to be called up to meet Him in the air. You didn't think a 77-year-old man could climb that good, did you? Okay, Leroy, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, buddy. Can I give you one more scripture? Let's go to 1 John, the third chapter. 
the best way to find John is go to Revelations, and there's the book of Jude, and take a left, and then there's the book of John right after the book of Jude. First John, the third chapter. Watch this. First John, the third chapter. Then I'm going to pray for these people. Anybody by Facebook and enjoying this, say amen. I can see you out there. God give me words of knowledge. People watching. God gave Brother Jeff down in Alabama. He's probably watching. God gave me a word of knowledge about his back one day. And God healed him. He said he's still healed. Down in Alabama. First John, the third chapter. Are you there? Behold, look, look. Everybody say look. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, and Dad Hagen taught, taught us, if you see the word therefore, find out what it's there for. Therefore. Somebody say therefore. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Why? Because it knew him not. The world don't know Woody Martin. The world don't know you if you're a Christian. It knows us not because it don't know Jesus. If you've got Jesus in you, you're different from the world. Come out from the world and be separate, saith the Lord. All right, verse 2. Beloved, now, when? Faith is when. Jesus sent him out the second time. He said, now, when you go forth. All right, beloved, now are we the sons of God. When are we the sons of God? Right now. Not at the death, not at the resurrection, not when we get to heaven, but now while we're on this earth, we are the sons of God. Everybody say, I'm a son of God right now. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, verse 2. But we know that when he shall appear, that's Jesus, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man or every woman that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. I know I'm a son of God right now. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when Jesus shall appear. We'll be like him. Why? For we shall see him as he is. And we'll be like him. Everybody point your finger up and say, I'm going to be like Jesus. Come on. Say, I'm going to be like him. Why? For I shall see him. I'm, say, I'm going to see him. I'm going to see him as he is. You're going to have a glorified body just like Jesus. You're going to be just like Jesus. You're going to have a glorified body. When he breaks you up, he pulls you up uh, to beat him in the air. You're going to be just like him. You're going to be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Not 60 seconds. Paul first said a twinkling of an eye, and he got to thinking, no, it's going to be quicker than that, in a twinkling of an eye. Science has got that down to a 20th part of a second. But as you can twinkle your eye, you're going to be changed. I believe when we get to heaven, there won't be no fat people there. There'll be no heart trouble, no disease, no sugar diabetes. Hello, hello. Why? We're going to be changed. We're going to be changed. We're going to be changed. We shall be changed. We shall be changed. Changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. My brother Gene Martin used to sing that song right here at Victory Temple. Singing it in heaven now. Now we are the sons of God. When we're the sons of God now. If you'll give me about three more minutes, I'm going to pray for everybody that needs prayer, desires prayer. I 
started out honoring our veterans. And I started out talking about this could be very well be the rebellious generation. I personally believe that it is. People just rebelling against authority. Even your children at school, they rebel against their teachers. Rebellion is everywhere. Rebelling against parents, rebelling against grandparents, rebelling against authority, church people rebelling against their pastor, dishonoring their pastor, disrespecting their pastor, parents disrespecting their pastor. So I believe we're living in a rebellious generation. And I believe that if we have the spirit of Christ, we have spiritual antennas. I do not believe that you can drink and party and live like hell and go to heaven. That someone made a statement recently that they were saved, that they could drink and they could party and still go to heaven. Unpack your bags, Josephine. You're not going. You're not going. You've got to make 100. 99 and a half ain't going to do. Now, I want you to write these scriptures down because God gave me a revelational truth. I do not believe once in grace, always in grace. The Bible teaches against that. I don't believe once saved, always saved. The Bible teaches against that. I believe there'll be people in hell that believe that, thinking that they're going to make it to heaven. And I'm going to give you scripture. Exodus. If you've got a Bible, go with me to Exodus, the 32nd chapter. If you'll give me five more minutes. How many will give me five minutes? Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. I'll take it. Seriously, I will be through here when I get through. Everybody say Exodus 32, 31. Israel was dancing, made them other gods. Moses goes before God in verse 31. He returns to the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold took all their gold, jewelry, earrings, and made them a god of gold. And they started worshiping that god of gold because Moses was gone too long in the mountain. But see, he was up there talking to God. And when you're talking to God, you don't get in no hurry. Boy, I, Verse 32, Genesis 32, 32. Moses is pleading with God. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, I'm asking you, Lord, to forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou has written. Lord, I want you to forgive these people. They're shouting down there. They were shouting and dancing around that golden calf. And Moses says, Lord, I want you to forgive them. And if you don't forgive them, blot me out of your book. Take me out of your book. And look what God said in verse 33. Exodus 32 and 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now some folks will tell you once it's in there and there'll be a race, we're going to find out. Him will I blot out of my book. Not you, Moses, but those that have sinned against me, those are the ones that I'll blot out of my book. Revelations 22 and 19. While you're turning there, let me quote, write Psalm 69, verse 28 down. Psalm 69, verse 28. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. That is those that have had their names written in the book of life and God said, I didn't say, He said He'd take it out. Revelation 22 and 19, you don't believe that? Well, oh, Brother Martin, that's the Old Testament that God said He'd do that. Well, He still got His blotter in the New Testament. He still has that blotter. Amen. So He had a blot. He's going to blot them out in the Old Testament. And Moses said, Please, Lord, blot my name out. And God said, No. Him that has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. And every time you get a scripture that you want to prove a doctrinal point, you've got to have the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. 
So we see God still has a blotter in the New Testament. Revelations 22 and 19. Everybody say 22 and 19. Revelations 22 and 19. And if any man, somebody say any man, shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So does that sound to you like you can send everything and go to heaven? God still has a blotter. Everybody say, God still has a blotter. Say, Lord, please don't blot me out. I'm just serious. Amen. Revelations 3 and 5. Write it down. I'm through. Revelations 3 and verse 5. Jesus said to him that overcometh, to those that overcome, to those that overcome, ever say, those, those, those that overcome, to those that overcome, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. It's promised to the overcomers, not to those that sin more or less every day, but those that overcome that sin. You know, I can't do this myself, but I can do all things through Christ. I can't overcome sin by myself, but I can do all things through Christ. I said I was going to quit, but I usually say that three times before I really do. Thank you, Christine. Write this down, Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18 and 24. Ezekiel, the 18th chapter and verse 24. It says, When the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and doeth according to all the abomination that the wicked man doeth, Shall he live? Question. Talking about a righteous man. Somebody say a righteous man. A righteous man that commits iniquity. I'm going to reiterate. reiterate. You can't booze and drink and live like hell and go to parties. You better enjoy your party and your boozing now and your sex now because there will be no parties in hell. There will be no partying in hell. So enjoy it while you can. But you heard a preacher say you can't get by with that and go to heaven. Because God will hold it against you. And God will hold it against me if I don't preach it. So God says, Ezekiel, when a righteous man, a righteous man, everybody say a righteous man. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity. And doth according to all the abomination that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? Question. All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespasses that he has trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. And your righteousness won't even be mentioned before. If, you, if, you, if you've been saved and you die in a car wreck as a drunk, you'll stand before God as a drunkard. And all your righteousness that you have done will not be mentioned before the Lord. There's a football coach, young football coach, 24 years old, in this area. He, uh, Friday night after the game, got drunk. He had... Uh, these big, I don't, I guess 20 ounces of beer, six packs of beer, 20 ounces or 24, I, the big ones, not the, I, I know, anyway, they were big ones. There was eight empty beer cans, 20 ounces, I guess, had uh, 12 cans of beer in his new, brand new pickup truck. And he had a wreck and died instantly. They checked his alcohol content. He was over 2% above the legal limit of being drunk. So he was twice drunk. They had his funeral at a church in this area. Listen to me. And the 
pastor of that church, about 55 or 60 football players, his team was there. And that pastor got up there and preached that drunken football coach into heaven because he was a member of the blank, blank church. You know what that pastor did? He told that young football team, it's all right to drink beer. You can still go to heaven if you drink beer because he preached that football coach into heaven. Well, he could have been saved. Yes, he could have. He could have asked God to forgive him. But the way I understand the word of God, if you dry, die as a tree falls, so shall it lie. If you die in sin, you'll stand before God as a sinner. If you, if you die praising the Lord, I believe you'll go to heaven praising the Lord. All the righteousness that he had done shall not be mentioned before the Lord. Now, when a, ma a righteous man turns away from his righteous and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, his iniquity that he had done, he shall die that way. I, I, I told you I'd prayed and I weighed what I was about to say and preach today. I know people want to get happy, and we, we're, we're, we're known for being happy around here. But there's times that preachers have got to tell the truth. Have you heard the truth today? And the truth will do what? Amen. I want my ladies from Macon, Georgia to come up here. And anyone else. Brother Chris, come up here. Anyone else that needs prayer, I want you to come up here today. Because I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. On occasion, God will let me call somebody out or tell somebody uh, through a word of knowledge what's wrong with them. Are y'all coming or you just want to stand there and look? Come on, come on, come on. Now, when I get through, I'm through. I've been on my feet since 1030. It's, uh, don't know why I look at the clock. It's been well over two hours. And if I can stand, you can stand. Amen. I said, if I can stand, you can stand. I hear a preacher on television and radio and before he goes off, he said, Neighbor, whatever you do, stand up for Jesus. Because he laid down his life for you. I like that. Hallelujah. Give me the oil. Mother, the Lord says this is not going to be a trip in vain. She got, she's one of our partners. She got the oil, the blood of Jesus oil. And... She said, I hope you don't get offended. She said, I prayed for my dog. I anointed my dog. And God healed my dog. I said, praise the Lord. God said, he'd bless your pets, your animals, your stock. John Wesley, the Methodist circuit riding preacher, his horse got sick. He got off as his horse and laid hands on his horse and prayed for his horse. God healed his horse. He settled back up and continued his journey. If you're a pet lover, God loves them. Why did God make pets if he didn't put them there to love? Amen. The same God that used you to touch your pet. God's going to heal you. You're going to be like James Davis from Macon. This is going to be one of the best things you ever did in your life to come to the Victory Temple Church because God's going to heal you. I see God purifying your blood. Yes, he is. He's healing your heart. Also hardening of the arteries, the swelling in your body. The fact about it today, when you got dressed, you couldn't hardly really get your shoes on for the swelling in your body. I decree in the next seven days, the, the fluids, the swelling in your body. Kim Hurst has lost 40 pounds in the last four or five weeks. Lost 12 pounds instantly in this church. Instantly. Instantly the swelling went out of her body. Be healed. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. There it is. And the Lord would say, He's going to give you a house. 
and in the address of the house will be the, the number two, the number one, and the number seven. You can write that down. The house that you move into will have a two, a one, and the number seven in it, and God's going to see to it that it's financed. I'm not saying it's going to be debt-free, but God's going to see to it to work the arrangements out to where you can move in that house and you can be together. Daughter and mother should be together, not separated. Hey, God, do it in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Jesus' name. Somebody help him praise God. Bishop, turn that organ up just a little bit. Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. There it is. And I hear the Lord saying, ma'am, God's forgiven you for what you did, and you need to forgive yourself. God says you are forgiven. It's in the past. Everybody say it's in the past. God said he's forgiven you, and there's now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus that walk not out of the flesh but out of the Spirit. God says you're forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. There it is. There it is. Now thank him for it. Praise him for it. Come on, praise him for it. Hallelujah. Go ahead, let it out, let it out. You need it. Everybody say, release it, Lord. Let it out. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mark, come up here and help me usher. Get behind, beside Leroy. Glory to God. Until I tell you different, that's going to be your job. I'll draft them if I have to. Lord of God, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Do you feel that, Mother? Yes. No. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Did I tell her the truth? Yes. yes. Did I tell you the truth? Yes. Yes. I'm not going to interview her because she ain't studying me or nobody else right now. Just her and Jesus. God says the swelling in your body is going to be gone as well. In the next seven days, hallelujah, the swelling in your body like your mother, God's going to heal both of you. And the swelling in the next seven days. There it is. Hallelujah. That's, that's the Holy Ghost. You know, the doctors, when they operate, they put you on an operating table. This floor is God's Holy Ghost operating table. Amen. Come over here, ma'am. Hallelujah. Would you come with her? Come, come on over here. Hallelujah. Give me the oil, brother. Yeah. A morning spirit. A morning spirit. And that's what it is. People's got loved ones that died 20 years ago. They're still mourning about it. That's a spirit. It's not from God. You love your loved ones. You thank God for them. But when they're gone, they're gone. That's, I, I just I don't want to get into that. I don't, I don't, I don't. I went to my... Father's grave twice, my first time and my last time. Went to his graveside years ago. There's my sister right there, our father. I went to his grave one time, and I started talking to him. He's in the grave. And the Lord showed me in Ecclesiastes 5 and 16 that the dead knoweth nothing. And we've got priests that are praying to dead saints. The dead don't know nothing. Quit. That's witchcraft. That's witchcraft. You going to that tomb and, and, and putting Windex on the tomb and getting the bird droppings off the tomb and kissing that tomb, that person's not there. Quit wasting your time. Get rid of that mourning spirit. If they've died in the Lord, thank God that you'll see them one day after a while. Oh, 
in rare form today, aren't I? Glory to God. I'm going to preach all of it here. The whole nine yards. Yeah. 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 I hate cancer. Hate it with a passion. Elder Merle, do you hate cancer? Curse it at the root, you hear me? Curse it at the root. Five and a half years ago, I went to the hospital in Knoxville, Tennessee. Teresa, his wife, called me. Called the family members in. They gave him 24 hours to live five years ago, over five years ago. Anointing with oil. Prayed the prayer of faith. I didn't go in there and pray that Mickey Mouse prayer. And Lord, heal Merle if it be thy will. Heal him, Lord, if it be thou. I read the will. I know the will. A 77-year-old preacher is sharing the will with you right now, and God says, I will heal thee. I will take sickness from the midst of thee. A leper came to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you will, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I will be thou fleeing. I anoint you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the morning spirit. And the Lord will say, Why weary? For buddies with me, saith the Lord. Woo! Yeah, Lord. He's with the Lord. Therefore rejoice in that you will see him again when his life is over, saith the Lord. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah, oil, oil. When I anoint you, David said, I anointed my head with oil. I'm going to anoint you, Mark, I'm going to anoint you with oil. Dry your tears saith the Lord. Comfort ye, comfort ye, oh, comfort ye my people, saith the Lord. And I say unto thee this day, yea, I am the healer of the brokenhearted, and I heal thine heart this day, saith God. Yes! I, ha, oh, God, there it is, there it is, there it is. Somebody praise God with her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, sweet Jesus. Glory to God. Brother, I anoint you. And the Lord says the devil should have killed you when he had you there. But he didn't succeed. Therefore, God is going to restore to you a double portion of this morning. This morning. Double blessing of the hand of God. I speak to you as the prophet. God. I was thinking about you one day this week. I was going to tell Teresa tomorrow to mail you a CD, a preaching CD, because you're in my spirit. I want you to receive it. Part of my name. Because you believe in me. I know you do. I know you do. You have defended me. And I know I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Because you've done that and you stood with the man of God, the prophet of God, God said he's going to stand by you. There's never before. I bless you in the name of Jesus. God's going to renew. God is going to renew the anointing upon you. Renew the anointing to preach. Renew the ability to make money. I curse the spirit of poverty to come upon thee, saith the Lord. I bless you this day in the name of Jesus. This trip is not in vain. I touch you and I bless you. Your family, you and your family will be blessed by the spirit of the Lord. Be healed. Jesus. Touch his eyes. Hallelujah. Uh, see, you see, Hallelujah. I curse the effect of the stroke. In the name of Jesus, I pray for my mother that had a stroke. She is in the nursing home. Her mouth was drawn. Her hand was drawn. My sister's right there. I can tell you, I got a witness. 
when that nursing home brought her, I checked her out of the nursing home, brought her to my house, brought her to the church that night and prayed for her and God healed her. I took her to her house and she lived in her house two years before she passed. The Lord opened up the eyes of the blind in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus' name. What did you say? Complete. complete. Yes, Lord, complete it. Don't want a partial, want to complete. Complete, complete, complete. In Jesus' name. Everybody stretch your hand this way. The next miracle I service will be December 31st, but we got to take care of this one tonight, right now, this afternoon. Go ahead and play that, Harry. That's good. Yes, Lord. I curse the spirit of blindness. I curse it. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. When did this happen? This past Monday. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Speak to our God. Be a prophet of God. God heals you right now. You're healed and saved. I know your life is clean before God is a minister of the gospel. I know your life is clean and pure before the Lord and God says Jesus yes Lord it's done in Jesus name Lord Hallelujah. how's that feels better better I don't want it better I want to heal if God can do better, He can heal it all. Amen. I saw a preacher on television, and somebody was partially blind. They said he said thirty percent better. And after that, everybody come up. They said their vision was thirty percent better. I don't think God does half of it or thirty percent. I believe He does it all. Amen. Huh? He does it all. Lord, it's done in Jesus' name. I thank you that it is done in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Huh? I receive it. Look at me, man. It's not drawn now. That face is not drawn over. Amen. Get that mirror up there by, in the pulpit, Leroy. Hurry, hurry. I do things uh, on the spare of a moment. Hold it. Hold the, hold the mirror up. Is it drawn? No. Well, what do you see? What do you mean? Well, <laughs> but, uh, I see healing. I see a change. Amen. And especially on that side. And you say this happened this Saturday, uh, Friday, Monday. This Monday. Yeah. That was a week when it got worse. And if you notice when he came in, did you see his jaw when he came in, Deacon? That was drawn to one side like a symptom of a stroke. Cell palsy. Cell palsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's what they told you. They said, God said. Well, look, look, look and see what you see. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to ask your wife about that. Yeah, she has a different. <laughs> I love you, brother. You're healed in Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord a clap off and a praise. Well, praise the Lord. I don't have the request, Facebook family, but I'll get them later. But I want to pray for you right now before we go off of Facebook. We will be back next Sunday at this time. And I want to remind you that we are now on the Word Network every Tuesday morning at 1 a.m. Every Tuesday morning, after tomorrow's Monday, of course, and after midnight on Tuesday morning at 1 a.m., we're on the net, uh, Word Network, and every Thursday and Friday at 12 midnight. Believe in God to give us a strip.
were t telling people about Jesus. And that Monday night that was on this past Monday, or Tuesday, I should say, we got more calls on that one program than we did on the other programs that we've been on there for months and years. So uh, that's on Direct TV, uh, channel 373 on Direct TV on the Word Network. Now, Lord, for my Facebook family, I don't have all the requests, Lord, but I pray for the Facebook family that you would touch and bless and heal and meet needs. Give me a miracle, Lord. I pray for Bell Palsy. Everyone that has Bell Palsy, I curse that in the name of Jesus to be healed in the name of Jesus. I break that power in the name of Jesus. Those that are rebellious, I break that rebellious spirit in children and grandchildren. I break that rebellious spirit in those children and their grandchildren. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I bind that rebellion in Jesus' name. I send this over the airways. I send it into the homes. I send it into the places of business and into the schools. I bind the spirit of bullying. Those children that have been bullied at school, I speak a deliverance to those that have been bullied in school. That spirit of bullying, you must leave in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft spirit, leave in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Lord, for every person that has eye problems, sickness in their eyes, glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, nearsightedness, farsightedness, blindness, bell palsy. Lord God, Steve Johnson syndrome, I, I curse it. I've called it by name and I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. That woman that's carrying that heavy burden for her children that's on drugs, that grandson that's on drugs, deliver him, Lord. That man that has diabetes and he's facing surgery of that foot, I speak in the name of Jesus. Healing over these airways today. Be healed in the name of Jesus. The anointing of God is here to break every bondage. The anointing of God is here to set you free. And Lord, those that are lost, those that are alcoholics, those that are bound by drugs, I send the word. God, you said in Psalms 120 that you sent your word and heal them. I send the word for deliverance. I send the word for witchcraft to be broken. I send the word for the spirit of sorcery, drugs, and alcohol be broken in the name of Jesus. God, set these people free today. Lord, I want testimonies from this service today on Facebook that people have been delivered as we prayed the prayer of faith. Come on church agree with me that God will do a miracle right now in people's lives in Jesus name. My goodness there's an anointing here. Whoo, wow, wow, wow. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you Lord. Praise you Lord. Lord everything we've done we've done it in your name. We believe you Lord God for miracles. Thank you for the miracles, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we call it done. We'll be back next week at 1030. Probably several this week coming. I'll drop in and give you little tidbits of what God's doing and the miracles, sharing those with you. God bless you till the next week at this same time. Amen. Let's give Facebook a God bless you, everybody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we had some church today. Macon, did you enjoy the...